Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, to our men's group and to our uh, excellent study in the theology of Jürgen Moltmann, his latest book, The Living God, which is a, a tremendous work and a, a tremendous contribution to contemporary theology and theology for all time, as far as that goes. We've had a great look already at the um, attributes of God and the new way that Jürgen Moltmann wanted to approach the attributes of God by abbreviating them under the generic overarching attribute of henosis. God is the unifying God, and he is the unifying God who is lifting up all of creation and regathering it within a union and a unity with God's self. So the kingdom of God is a process of henosis. It is a unifying activity of the Spirit of God in finitude, which we can live in today, see today spiritually, hear today spiritually. If we uh, enlist that hupakuo spiritual perception, we can live in this uh, process of henosis that is ever-present as the kingdom of God in our finite reality. That took up the first half of the book, and then we had a major shift into discipleship and the uh, attention to the fullness of life and discipleship and what that means. And we've had a chance to look at a, a few essential aspects of that. We did deal with uh, friendship just recently, which is the binding agent of the process of henosis. And before we jump into it, the next major point of teaching, Professor Moltmann gives us a, a brief little synopsis about what discipleship is not. He wants to deal with uh, what has become prevalent today, and that's a kind of a, a turn toward Buddhism, which is kind of unusual, but it's a kind of a Western westernized version of Buddhism, which has become prevalent. So it takes a little bit of a detour here, but just basically to highlight the fact that uh, we do not evacuate the passions in Christian life and in Christian discipleship. We, in fact, turn toward the passions and toward the true, authentic, aletheia truth of the Lord God, the living God. So we're going to take a look at this little detour in discussing the uh, negativity that we want to uh, negate. We'll begin with the content on the left. We're going to take a look at uh, humanity's striving for fullness and Buddha. And according to the uh, Western Buddhism of today, the self is to surmount suffering through transcendent quenching of desire, a negation of desire. And through the extinction of drives, consciousness extinguishes the sphere of the six senses. And the goal is to reach nibbana or the coming to rest of all being. You want to reach that uh, detached state that uh, negates and extinguishes the sensory drives and uh, desires and reach that goal of coming to rest of all being. Release means the extinction of the passion for life. But selfless compassion can go hand in hand with the extinction of desire. So the extinction of desire can still include empathy and compassion on the part of the uh, individual. In contrast to this uh, striving toward the coming to rest of all being, is block two, the striving for fullness and the Paul of the Corinthians, the Paul of the uh, epistle to the Corinthians. Believers in Corinth were more concerned about self-love and self-praise, but true divine love lifts people out of themselves and creates the forgetting of ego. Self-seeking love must transition, according to Paul, to pleasure in the other. Self-seeking love is a desire of the will that leaves the ego remaining solitary 
but the desire for union with the other makes love into creative love. And that principle of equality that says like seeks like is overcome and uh, negated. And in Christian love, the self is prepared for suffering for the sake of the other, for the sake of the one who is unlike the self. Willing to go out in this preparedness to suffer and bear the cross of Christ for the kingdom. Then if we take a look at the third block, we're going to look at the striving for fullness and the false synthesis, says Moltmann, where Western Buddhism gets synthesized with uh, Christianity and you get kind of this uh, aesthetic spirituality, which is a, a false Christian perspective and a false Christian identity. And this grew out of a, a false metaphysic of substance. The soul was perceived as eternal and the body as transitory. Platonic dualism resulted uh, between the body and the soul. And the soul was characterized as absent of all passions. Moltmann says in note 5 here that there's a necessity for some corrective teaching. For Paul, the believer becomes a new creation. And the believer already lives in this new creation. And instead of an ascetic apathy, the believer overcomes the world of Sark's flesh through participation in the divine passion. We don't turn away from passion. We actually participate in the divine passion. It is a love that is understood as God's joy of finding, as uh, Professor Moltmann told us earlier, because we have been laid hold of in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are we have been sought out and found by a seeking and a finding God, a seeking and a finding subject, God as subject, transcendence as subject. He gives a seeking, finding God. And he draws us to the Son, and then through the word of the rhema voice of the Son, then we are drawn to the moment of faith and salvation. But it is a drawing by the Father. To the Son. So it is a seeking and a finding, and as Moltmann taught us earlier, God enjoys that joy of finding of anyone who had been previously lost. And furthermore, we are to participate in this love by practicing and participating in forgiveness, in forgiveness. So it's basically a synopsis of what uh, Professor Moltmann has if any of you are familiar with his earlier work, of course we know that all of his work has emphasized uh, the passivity of God, the suffering God, and of course his, his second major work, the crucified God, certainly drew attention to this. And it, his theology has very much centered on a praxis-based going out of the self in love toward the other, and then dialectically working toward opening up these free spaces of transcendence to create space for the emerging, ever-present kingdom of God. And so it's a not a new lesson since the lesson on friendship. We just finished the lesson on friendship. But before he gets into the next teaching, he has this a slight detour to just point out that we most certainly want to negate the westernized Buddhism that has emerged in Western culture today. There seems to be a real upward swing toward this uh, Western Buddhism, but that position is antithetical to the Christian willingness to suffer and absolutely is in contrast with what it would mean to follow Christ and to bear our cross as followers of Christ. So it's a clarification it's not going to be anything new to anyone who is familiar with, with uh, Jürgen Moltmann's theology. We are most certainly aware of his theology, but he wants to take this detour, just give a very brief clarification, and uh, before he gets into his next major point of teaching, and appropriately enough, he wants to interject this right after discussing the concept of friendship. So it's a good time for him to insert it. So he gives us a very brief detour here,